Welcome to this edition of the Western and Fishing Branch Partnership. Today we're going to talk about a lot of things that we have to do to be prepared when we hit the ice so we can maximize our potential and continue to grow and improve as officials. We're going to talk about skating and fitness. First we're going to talk about physical and mental preparation. What are the things that we need to do to prepare to be ready when we hit the ice? For some of us, the mental preparation might start the night before, it might start the day of, it might start on the way to the rink. And the physical preparation, what does that mean? Things we do the day before, things we do the day of, things we do when we're at the arena. Everybody's going to do something different as they prepare for the game, both physically and mentally. And that's great. Everything we do individually works for us. Let's hear from some of our partners, some of their tips. I think physically, just try to make sure your sleep pattern is, is, is you're getting as much rest as possible. Um, as far as uh, physically getting getting warmed up before the game, making sure we're ready to go when we hit the ice, just like the players, is extremely important. So you know, stretching before and then and then mental preparation is a huge huge piece too. So thinking about the game, thinking about the job you're going to do on the ice, if there's anything any kind of uh, game intel that you need to know from game to game, it's super important. When you get the game assignment, you start thinking about you know who you're working that night or. Um you know, the lineups. Um, you start looking at a little bit deeper into you know team's history of you know the games that they're playing, where they're going to be at when that game happens, and it, it moves right up to the time of the game. Um, you know, being healthy, being uh, your body being ready to go, and it, it transfers right onto the ice so that you're fully prepared for any situations that would arise during the game. Mentally, for me, it kind of starts the day before. I like to get in contact with the guys I'm working with the next night, afternoon, whatever it may be. Um, and also take a look at some video and my supervision if there was a supervisor there from my previous game. So I think obviously the uh, the physical part, just, just showing up early to the rink and, and getting the body going, especially when you get older, you gotta get get things moving a little bit uh, a little bit earlier and so you're ready when you step out on the ice. And I think the mental side of things, just trying to trying to bring your best every game. You know, sometimes you might have a tough day at work or you it might be uh, if you're if you're a younger official and you're playing that day, and you know the, the the game that you're going to might not be on the top of your of your priority list, or you know you might have other things on your mind. But just the ability to kind of put those things those things aside and put your best foot forward, and and uh, you know really really focus in for for 60 minutes and, and and make sure that you're ready to go when that puck drops. Once you get to the rink, you need to. Uh go through a proper warm up, get the blood flowing, get your body loose. And uh, there's all sorts of things you can do mentally. Um, some guys like quiet time, some guys like to talk about the game with their officiating crew, all sorts of things like that to mentally prepare yourself, knowing the players, knowing the coaches, knowing when they last played, things like that to mentally be engaged in the game as well. Yeah, I think the physical part of it starts way before the game and way before the season starts and fitness, nutrition, skating, enhancement drills, those kinds of things should all be done well before. As you get closer to the game you want to do some pre-game stretching of your body but also of your mind. Um, we talk about game intelligence. There's nothing more important than uh, knowing who the teams are, who the, the individuals are, the characters on it, some of their personalities, whether you're a linesman and the, the habits of certain centermen or the captains and people you can talk to. There's so much you can do ahead of time to prepare yourself and if you need to use those facts during the game, you've got them. If you don't, no harm done, you're ready for the next time. So physical and mental preparation are paramount. Some great stuff of mental and physical preparation. We talk about skating. We talk about skating skills. The game of hockey has evolved. It's got to be a very fast game and it continues to progress to be faster. So skating is something that we have to continue to work on. We have to understand what our skill set is and how we maximize our skating skills. Reading the play, reacting to the play, and using our skill set. We have to be able to skate at the level of hockey we're working. Once we achieve that, we can continue to work on our sight lines, reading the play, and the things that will give us the best opportunity for success. Let's hear from some of our partners how important skating is. I think just being able to really get to the best sight line you can is a big thing with, with um, you know, having good skating skills. Um, you know, you're not going to be able to see it if you can't skate there. Um, also, I think just the perception um, as well. If you're hustling hard out there, really smooth skating, it gives a it gives a perception of, you know, you really know what you're doing out there. You have to be able to move and to read the play to get in the spot. 
so that the players can make the best play. And I think that's the most critical part of it. Um, and, and with that said, you also have to get in a spot that you can see the play to officiate what's happening. So um, I think that's an area we're going to have to continue to grow on. Skating is, is I don't want to say everything, but it, it is a huge part of, of officiating. It's the first thing that uh, your coaches are going to notice. It's the first thing that um, the players and fans are going to notice is, is your skating ability. Um, it allows you to um, keep up with the game. The game of hockey's changed and it's, it's very fast. Uh, so we as officials need to be fast. The game only gets faster and faster, it seems. The players are training harder and harder. They're getting quicker and quicker. Um, so we need, as officials, we need to be strong skaters to keep up with the play. We need to be able to put ourselves in the right position to make the right call. To me, that's, that's the main thing. You need to be uh, an exceptional athlete to prevail at the highest levels. It's no different for officiating. The speed of the game since the, uh, the change in the restraining fouls and the applying the standard is so fast that you need to be physically fit and an excellent skater in order to do the job properly. Regardless of what your judgment skills are or other skills, if you don't have the proper sight lines to make that decision and process what happens, you're left out in the cold. And, and so you need, you need to be an above average, excellent skater, and you need to have a, a fitness to carry you through the games, the weeks, the season. I think skating is it's super important because uh, unlike the players, we don't get a break. We're out there for 60 minutes, we're, we're skating. I mean, I think our, our biggest job, and I think one of the biggest qualities as official is, is how well we skate. If we can stay, stay out of the play, but still maintain great sight lines throughout the game. I mean, all of our job, a lot of it boils down to what kind of sight lines we have. And bottom line is the, the better skater you are, the better sight lines you're gonna have. We're on the same ice surface as those players. They're flying. We need to be able to fly just as fast as they do. So in the off season and throughout the season, they get to practice. They do uh, off, um, um, off season training. It should be no different for us as officials when the expectation is um, as you uh, advance to higher leagues is to keep up with those players, we need to be doing the same thing. We need to be able to move fluently with the play, whether you're the high guy, low guy, um, linesman, whatever. Um, it's, uh, it's honestly, it's pretty paramount in getting yourself in a good spot in order to see the play correctly and make the prop decision. It's something that separates guys. So if, if, uh, it's definitely one of the biggest things that, that you can work on and um, it's something you can always get better at, right? And you can always try to, to improve upon and it makes a huge difference. Some great stuff on skating. Let's talk about fitness, how important fitness is. It's very similar to skating. We have to be at a fitness level the same as the players that we're working. It's a lot of hard work, whether it be running, riding the bike, fitness classes, spin classes, anything that fits your lifestyle and the things that you want to do. Fitness is very important, and it's something that's going to help you progress through your officiating career. Something that we can control and work on, and we can all get better at. Let's hear from some of our partners and what they do and their thoughts on fitness. Through the off season, you're you're looking to you know get stronger, get faster. Um, you're putting in you know heavy loaded days in the gym. Uh, you're, you're trying to improve your performance um, throughout the season. You're more on the maintenance um, regime. If you're tired out there. We've all kind of felt that before, and as soon as we get tired out there, and then then our decision making slows down, and, and you know we start to miss things and, and things like that. So if we can keep ourselves in good shape and, and uh, be ready to go and, and feel fresh out there for the full 60, then uh, we're going to be that much better off. You have to adapt your fitness routine. I I, I would say I adapt all the time. I have to. You have to listen to your body. Um, you know, you're going to go where you work in back-to-back -back games, you're going to work five games in seven nights. Um, so you're not going to be able to go to the gym and get a big workout in like you normally would. You're going to have to listen to your body in some of those days. It's just going to be stretching. Some days it's just going to be uh, rest and relaxing. Like there, you, sometimes it's just that's what your body needs and you just have to listen to what your body needs and not push it too hard. More so in an officiating perspective too, I would say that, um, you know, if our body begins to fatigue, 
our mind is also going to be able to, it's going to begin fatiguing. So, you know, when we get down to that crucial point in the game, you know, the last 10 minutes of the third period, five minutes, minute left in the game or overtime, oop, I said it. Um, you know, it's uh, super important that uh, we have that, uh, we're in that physical shape that our mind can stay focused as well. I think, again, a, a lot of it comes back to our skating ability. So, so the more physically you fit, fit you are, uh, that, that relates right back to you, to the ability to uh, be agile on the ice, your skating ability on the ice, all comes down to, to our fitness level. So we have to be just as fit as, as the players are, and that's it. That's the expectation of the elite level. Vaughn Rohde is an alumni official of the Western Hockey League and a current NHL linesman. Vaughn has assisted Western Hockey League officials for many years with their off-ice training. The following video shows Vaughn discussing some off-ice fitness drills that would be beneficial for all officials to practice. This is about making sure that you grab as much in your little toolbox as possible. Arms are squared away, so they're nice and straight. I'm engaging my abs, my abs are involved, and all I'm doing is just making figure eights, with this weight. Arms are straight, they're not in here. I'm not driving a car. They remain straight and tight, and I'm moving them together in unison as a figure eight drill with my abs. This is going to be our easiest drill. Okay, all I want is for one full minute, I want my, ski some of them are a little tighter than others, so you're gonna have to work through them, but I just want them out here, and I just want you to rotate your hips, just like that for one full minute, okay? This is gonna be the easiest drill we have here today. Okay, for one full minute. We're just gonna work on our inside thighs, work on our explosion skating, okay? So, anybody show me a reverse plank hold? Somebody wanna show me one? So get down, so turn around, you're gonna go on your back, okay? You're gonna put your forearms down, okay? Excellent job, you're gonna turn your head back, pull it back a little bit, gonna get your ass off the ground a little bit. Toes are pointed for one full minute, all right? Just for one full minute, fair enough? Keep your head back, nice job, awesome. Solid. <laughs> Up on the balls of our feet, skipping rope. For one full minute, this is a little short, but we're, this is what we're gonna do, okay? So, for one full minute, fair enough? Everybody good with that? I don't wanna see, our, I don't wanna see any kicks up on our ass. Legs are straight, we're up on the balls of our feet. One full minute, we're good? We're gonna go to a sprinting station. This is 15 yards. 15 yards. You're gonna come to the station, you're gonna sprint to the other end. You're gonna go around the pylon so we're not running into each other. You'll jog back. You'll get a little bit of time to catch your breath as you jog back again, come back to the starting line again, and it's just a full sprint again properly like we talked about, like we've been skating. We haven't, we've worked on making sure our arms aren't across our body. We're actually driving for power. That's how we're going to run, okay? We're gonna make sure our arms are driving for power and we're working our way through this whole sprint station. Final one is high knee box jumps. Gonna come right here. Come on over here for a second. We'll move our skipping sections back a little bit. High knee box jumps. We're just standing here, hockey ready position. Just gonna jump up as high as you can. Chest to your knees, continuous minute, one jump, okay? So just continuous, just high as you can. Boom, higher, higher, faster, higher, higher. There you go, load, explode, load, explode. That's it, for one full minute, okay? Looks easy, eh? <laughs> Looks easy. Some real good examples of things that we can be doing to increase our fitness, prepare for our games. I think it's really important that we learn today how important fitness and skating is and how they interconnect. And how we work hard, become better athletes within our skill set, can give us a better chance to create good sight lines, read and react to the play, and really the best opportunity to be a good official. Early on, we talked about the physical and mental preparation, and how important that is. I find it really interesting over the course of my career, all the different things different people did. How they prepared mentally and physically the day of the game while we were at the rink. And no matter what you do, it's right for you. And that's what's really important. We wish you the best of luck. We want you to travel safe. And we look forward to seeing you again soon.